Beautiful morning here this morning. Uh, thanks to Brian, uh, we've been film, filming uh, with his drone the uh, the morning sunrise and the the barn just recently painted in the building site along with uh, whatever else he can catch here this morning. Um, he promised me he would check the cows for me with that drone, but that uh, we ran out of batteries, and so uh, I'm going to have to do that myself. <laughs> Darn it. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, Alan, tell me a little bit about this farm that we're on. When uh, you first became aware of this place? Well, I was, uh, of course, born and raised here, and so it, it became part of the part of the anatomy of, of me uh, 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 almost seventy years ago. Um, uh, the farm was uh, uh, at that time owned by my dad. Um, who had bought it uh, from his sister, uh, bought a part of it uh, from his sister in 1950 uh, when mom and, and dad moved here and started farming this place. Uh, I was born in 54, and so uh, uh, it, it became part of my uh, uh, psyche and my being uh, ever since I was a little kid. And then uh, in 1998, after dad died, I decided to move home. And uh, and keep this place in uh, going, and so from since '98 until currently, I've been living here, and uh, raising cattle, and and uh, living on the place, fixing it up. Um, uh, in 2006, I married uh, Glenna Thompson, uh, and she's lived with me here on this place ever since and so it's been quite the experience quite the opportunity for me i i really uh, I've enjoyed the whole the whole thing over the years it's been a lot of challenges a lot of changes since then and um, but uh, overall it's been a, a great place to live which uh, which farm activities are you doing today that you still did back when you were living here growing up oh well uh, raising cattle is uh, the main thing that I do here now. I'm partially retired now, and so uh, I rent out quite a bit of the crop ground, have some of it custom farmed, uh, but yet I still uh, I maintain a, a, a small, reasonably small cow herd of 50 head. Um, um, and, of course, it involves uh, ra uh, raising them, put them on pasture. It's a cow-calf operation, so I... Uh, raise the calves. Uh, uh, the mamas raise the calves during when they're born in the spring and raise them up till uh, about four or five hundred pounds, sometimes a little more than that. Uh, in, in the fall, we'll uh, wean the calves off and feed them for a month and sell them on a preconditioned sale uh, uh, here in uh, oh, around the first of the year then. So they're about, the calves are about six months old when they're, when they're uh, sold. And then we save my own heifers and 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 just kind of keep on doing that for a while. It's been a really great year this year because we've had plenty of rain. The pastures are lush, and and uh, so we've had uh, we've been lucky to have uh, some some nice growing conditions for both crops and and uh, um, and cattle. Um, of course, uh, this farm also grows corn and soybeans. I have alfalfa hay, and uh, along with the pastures, and so it takes. So there's quite a bit of different, a little more diversified perhaps than some some farms are uh, these days. But um, still, it uh, it create uh, the livestock creates uh, quite a bit of responsibility, quite a bit of work yet. And uh, so I know you have two daughters. What do they think about this place? Oh, they, they're, they're they were back here just a, a few days ago and and helped with some of the cleaning aspects of the barn and and uh, they bring the grandkids in and. Uh, 
my other daughter, uh, well, my, my oldest daughter, Karen, she brings her husband and their kids down here and, and, and they, they really enjoy the place, uh, it seems. And, and of course they, they get in on some of the other activities also, uh, um, you know, like working cattle and, and doing, doing that thing. You have to run calves through shoots and give them their vaccinations and their cows too, keep them healthy. And so they were, they're down here helping with sorting and stuff that I can't do as easily as I used to be able to do. Uh, my daughter Sarah just flew in here last uh, week and, and, and uh, spent some time here also uh, uh, looking over things, getting to know the place just a little bit better too. So uh, I think overall they, they enjoy the fact that it's here and enjoy the, the heritage part of it, and, you know, and listening to uh, me talk about, you know, grandparents and people who... Uh, um, first lived on this place. How many grandchildren do you have? Well, um, I have uh, three of, of my own, and my wife, Glenna, has uh, uh, four of her own. So uh, we, we have a mixed family, so we, we go back and forth, and, and uh, so we, uh, we enjoy them, too. Mm -hmm. Is this a favorite place? Of theirs that well, they like coming out and spending time with grandma and grandpa and well they they do actually they like coming back here on you know on occasion when they can some of them live quite a ways away so they aren't able to get here very often but they when they do they usually have quite a bit of fun here you know running around and bring the dogs and and um, uh, enjoy the activities that uh, you do get a ride on a tractor or that kind of thing so yeah, they yeah. they get used to it a little bit yeah and unfortunately, they don't get back here as much as you'd like to have them. But yeah. they, when they do, they, they seem to enjoy it. Yeah. How many um, How many Aunt Vi and Uncle Uncle Bernard stories do you tell them? Oh, uh, I, I try I try to have them become acquainted with my my folks and grandparents and stuff. Try to get you know, get the pictures out when we can on occasion to 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 reintroduce them to those people that have come before us. Um, but uh, yeah, the one story that uh, comes out on a kind of a regular basis is uh, uh, my uncle Ronnie and my, uh, my uncle Jerry would like to, like to come here when the dad, when dad and mom were first married and I was just, uh, you know, kind of real little and maybe not even born yet. They'd come here and, and, and help uh, mom and dad with the farm and, one day, um, um, Ronnie and Jerry happened to find a, uh, a pack of cigarettes that a, that a salesman had just left lay here when he stopped and visited with Dad. And that pack of cigarettes happened to get, get into their hands. And they found apparently found a lighter of some kind, lit them up, and Dad caught them smoking uh, 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 cigarettes on top of the gas barrel. Uh, just north of the house here. So <laughs> that's one story that comes out fairly regularly about Uncle Ronnie and uh, Un Uncle Jerry when they were kids uh, living here on the yeah, on the place. I'm sure there was a debate about who found them, but I bet there was no debate on whose idea it was a light one up. I don't know who who was guilty party in that respect. My, but my guess is Uncle Jerry said, let's light one up. Yep, I wouldn't doubt it. <laughs> I wouldn't doubt it. And then course dad had to get on him pretty hard when that happened uh yeah. you, you bet yeah. if you're gonna smoke don't yeah. do it by the uh, gas barrel. on the gas barrel <laughs> see the gas barrels were all only just you know little 50 gallon barrels at that time kind of on on yeah, remember, they could easily get on top I remember of him. that gas barrel yeah, yeah yeah and so that that was, uh, that, was that was that's one story and of course uh um other stories uh, uh my cousin jim would bring uh, chickens out here that his folks would get him that are colored, and so they would he'd bring those chickens out here when he'd come here to visit, and of course the chickens would grow and lose their colors and become part of the flock, and as roosters go, they many times would wind up uh, being uh, used as uh, food for people. You know they'd be butchered and and uh, so the one day. Uh, uh, Aunt Norma apparently uh, had one of those chickens, uh, was taking it back home and found that uh, the feathers were colored 
underneath the the feathers and so one of those chickens that Jim brought home they got to they got to utilize uh, as uh, as supper <laughs> you probably didn't tell Jim though well I don't know whether Jim figured it out or not he probably did he probably figured out that that was one of his chickens that got here so uh, so but uh, there's a lot of stories about the man family here because um, mom would have and dad also would have uh, uh, grandpa and grandma, grandpa and uncle Ronnie out here a lot. Um, uh, I remember when, uh, uh, this house here, um, was remodeled in the mid sixties. Anyhow, grandpa, grandpa man was here. He'd shingle for, for the folks. He'd come here and he would, uh, um, uh, do obviously do remodeling work for the folks and uncle Ronnie would help him and it made this house into more livable uh, at the time. Uh, it was built in 1900 by my great grandfather, William Plath. And of course, by the time, by the 50s and early 60s, it was starting to show its age. And so uh, uh, when I was a kid, they tore the north end of it off and added uh, what's uh, called the north end, the 60s edition now. Uh, Grandpa helped. And I remember helping also. Uh, uh, there was a great big beehive in, on the east side of this house. And, uh, of course, we had to take that beehive completely out. And that was a challenge, too, because there were still bees in that beehive up and down the walls, interior walls of that house. And we had to take them all out, take the lath out, and, and do a, lot, a bunch of construction work on this house. Um, but Grandpa also helped, Grandpa Man and Uncle Ronnie also helped shingling that barn. Uh, it was... Uh, in 1974, I think, uh, when they were here, Grandpa was in his 70s. 74, and, he would be yeah, 74. Yeah, he would be. And then Uncle Ronnie was a young man, but he was up there helping too. And Dad was up there helping put, put wood shingles back on that barn uh, in the 70s. And a pretty steep pitch. Yeah, that that's, that's a, yeah, that's a <laughs> steep pitch. They had to be really careful not to want to fall off of there. So, What, what year did the, this farm become Plath property? Well, um, um, my great great grandmother um, came from Cleveland, Ohio. Her name is Wilhelmina, and her her and her three sons came from Cleveland, Ohio, um, because her brother, she her maiden name was Michael. Her brother lived just about three miles south of here, and so they wanted. To, she wanted to get her boys out of the city and, and live on a farm. And so she then, um, and that would have been after her husband, who was John Plath, disappeared and was never found again. Uh, back in, in Ohio. Back in Ohio. <clears throat> and uh, so she, she took the initiative, and a lot of women wouldn't have done that those at those times. Uh, apparently had enough money for a down payment and 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 bought uh, 263 acres right in right where we are right now and uh, it really wasn't a homestead farm there was a set of buildings here uh, at that time there was a lot of land speculation and so people were buying and selling land because of the prices going up and so they would buy a land, piece of farmland for a while and so uh, she bought it from a fellow by the name of A.J. Cutler uh, who had owned it for oh maybe five six years and uh and then uh she bought it and uh, brought her boys up here who were they were teenagers and young men at that time and so they would then they helped uh, their uncle uh, uh, charles michael uh, uh, and then would they would farm with their mother here uh until she died uh and that would have uh, she bought it in 1882 and so, and, and she, it was 1893, she passed away. And of course, the three boys inherited this farm then after that. It was then split off and there was a settlement made where one of the boys bought another farm just that we own now, but it's just southeast of here. And uh, another boy sold his, his interest in, to, uh, to a Latta, a gentleman named Alatta, and then moved to a, a farm that they bought in south, south of Magnolia on the Little Bottom and raised their family there. But my great-great-grandfather, William, stayed here, and he then uh, uh, 
uh, built this house in 1900 because there, there was another house here that was in poor shape. So we built this in 1900 and lived here. And then in 1913, built the barn. Um, he also built a little granary that's uh, that used to set here. Um, some of the older buildings were here, an old barn, old granary, and some other older buildings were here. He built a, a chicken house in 1914 and another hog house in 1915 here. So he'd done a lot of, he did a lot of work to get this place started. Yeah. Uh, his name was William, or Bill, they called yeah. him. Yeah. And we've got pictures of the barn mm -hmm. when it was first built yeah. and uh, uh, some of the other uh, activities and stuff. But he then sold sold uh, the farm to his son in 1918. Uh, his and it would have been my grandfather, but and his name was Carl, and he married a, a, a Herman girl by the name of Frida, and they lived here uh, from 1918 to 1927 when she passed away. When my dad was only four years old, he and his older sister um, uh, lived here, and she would have been about about uh, ten or some a little bit older. Uh, and then um, his dad then passed away in 1936. And so the farm then went to uh, Agnes, his sister, and dad, but they were both minors. And so um, dad's uncle and aunt, or Ernie and Margaret Herman, then took control of, their, of, the, of the estate and kept the farm in, the, in their names um, and rented it out to uh, Arnold Menching for a few years, like four, until Aunt Agnes got married, and uh, that had been Dad's sister, uh, and her husband Bill moved here and uh, in 1940 after they were married and, and lived here for roughly 10 years with, and had, had two, two kids, Wilma and Wayne, and uh, they lived here up until about 1950, um, and that's about that time dad came home from the service and was, was, uh, back here. And, and so Aunt Agnes decided that dad ought to have this farm. And so she sold her half interest to dad in 1950 and mom, and then he moved here and then they moved on to a farm that they'd bought just out down the road a couple, three miles, a couple miles. So they farmed together, uh, after that from 1950 to, or to the mid sixties. And um, um, always stayed pretty close. Yeah. And uh, so, and then, of course, Dad uh, lived here almost 50 years yeah. uh, with, with Mom. Yeah. Uh, he died in 1998. And when Dad died, I, I had this urge to move back home. And so I did. And uh, No regrets? Uh, well, no. Um, a lot of work, but no regrets Absolutely. about that. Uh, respect so alan though down here what, what, tell me about this tractor that well this tractor is is one that i bought uh brian it's it's a kind of the same same tractor that dad and i dad used as a as his main work tractor back in the 50, 60s um it was one that he bought used and uh uh and then sold and traded in but then i found this one uh on the internet one day and I, I thought well it'd be nice to have one of these back and so I I just went out and, and bought it here a, a year or so ago and it's an Oliver Super 88 diesel and uh, dad used to plow with it and uh, he used to do a lot of his main field work with it uh, when when he had his back in the back in the 60s and so uh, so it, it was nicely cared for it needs some additional work but it it it's something that uh, it. Uh, well, this one here isn't just for looking for. It's been earning a little bit of its keep, hasn't it? Well, yeah, we use it. Yeah, we use it on the farm. We, uh, um, I pull, uh, pull manure spreader with it, and I've, I've pulled, uh, uh, you know, uh, different trailers and stuff that I use for hauling hay with it. And so it, it gets used. You want to keep them that way. You want to keep them running. This is the barn. So th this barn has recently uh, been acknowledged by. I can't remember the so Iowa I, Barn Foundation helped uh, me to uh, they 
there's there's a, a group of people that on that barn foundation who uh, like to see um, uh, Iowa barns preserved. There's okay. so many of them that have been lost over the yeah. years, and so this organization tends to to find these barns that are still um, keepable or, or still usable, mm -hmm. and this was one of them uh, that they helped put, uh, uh, by uh, giving me a grant to. Uh, help put the roof back on it. Uh, the the old wood shingles were getting bad, and and so we had had to put a roof on it. And uh, we've since uh, fixed up the cupola, and and we've since uh, uh, did quite a bit of work on the doors and the the exterior portions of the the barn and and the windows, and and so we've we've been able to keep it. Uh, a lot of the siding is original, but some of it isn't. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, when when Dad was here, a lot of the siding was getting bad. Livestock up against it, and, and it was starting to get. So he's replaced some of the he replaced some of the siding and did some bracing on it when he was here. That kept it going, and and uh, was lucky enough that the foundation is in, still in pretty good shape. Uh, so we uh, we painted it. Uh, just here the other day, yeah. got it back to uh, a good shade of red again. Mm -hmm. And we also painted the, the 1913 mm -hmm. date that it was built. And W.A. Plath was William A. Plath, who was my great-grandfather, who originally built the barn. We put that back up there also. Uh, we have a picture of a party that was uh, held after the barn was built, and you could see that that was on there at the time. Is that right? So we just replaced that. I always like this old bridge. And of course, my memory of this old bridge, um, the trees weren't as tall as they are now. Right. Yeah, I'm sure. What year was this bridge built? Well, uh, it, it, it was built a long time ago. Um, there, was a, there was a different bridge here maybe when you were a kid, and it was getting bad. So in the mid-70s, this bridge was put in as a replacement. Okay. And uh, it since has been here. And so, but I'm guessing the bridge probably built, you know, probably been, was erected in the 1920s or 30s, something like that. But, <laughs> yeah, this is a nice view of the place right here. I always enjoy yeah. uh, walking down to this bridge and then looking back and taking a look at things and kind of admiring what, what is good about it. And... Uh, of course, there's a lot of work associated with it too, but uh, yeah, the, the bridge itself uh, um, goes over Allen Creek. Um, and that didn't, they didn't, Indians didn't name that creek after you, did they? No, I don't know whether <laughs> whether uh, uh, Mr. Allen had anything to do with, with what was going on down on this place. Uh, uh, he was an old settler way up, up north is where he was. Yeah. And uh, they named it after him, and then he laughed. And so uh, we really don't know much history about him. But he had a <laughs> he had a, a little mill up there on on the creek that um, you know back in the 1850s, as I read and understand that. And uh, that, and so the the township Allen Allen Township in the creek was named after him, I, as I understand. So, well, did uh, all of that influence your mom and dad as to uh, giving maybe, you your name? Maybe. Uh, they're, they're, I mean, right? If I was named after the creek, yes, I, that could have been the case. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's hard to tell. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, but uh, that's the name they they chose. But uh, 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 Uncle Jerry also had the name his middle name Allen. And so I was kind of named after Uncle Jerry's middle name. Gerald it's, Allen. Uh, Gerald Allen Mann. Jam. So, yeah, yeah. And my brother Larry, his his middle name was Dean. After Grandpa. After Grandpa. Grandpa Mann. Just like so, my brother John. John's middle name is Dean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So that that's kind of how my yeah. name got. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But uh, Dad always said, well, I... I, I couldn't think of any other name than the crick, you know. <laughs> Had chores to do, right? Yeah, that's right, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you and Larry do a lot of playing in this crick when you are growing up? Yeah, or? we did actually quite a bit of, of exploring down through here. You know, the, yeah. at that time, there was little minnows um, uh, in the crick, and so we'd take a little screen, put it together, and go down here and catch minnows. Right. And then we'd take those minnows, and uh, a lot of farm ponds were being Using constructed at that time, so they... They'd stock those with bass and bluegill, you know, and so we'd take those minnows and use them as bait. Um, 
Yep. Yeah, we, we set up a raft once in a while, a creek, there'd be a places where the creek's a little wider. So we come down here and we take an old, old couple logs or something, put them together and we'd have ourselves a raft, you know, that would float maybe a little bit. Yeah, I was going to say. Uh, <laughs> Not much though. <laughs> compared to what it looks like today, yeah. what, what did the creek, how wide deep it was, was it back then? It was then? deeper. Uh, deeper. Those years, uh, years ago, it was actually deeper. Now they've, they've placed um, um, weirs on the creek to again help uh, reduce the amount of uh, uh, channelization on Allen Creek quite a bit and so those weirs tend to so, uh, reduce the, the depth of the creek right. and allow for vegetation to fill in and uh, and make it more stable. Yep. Mm -hmm. yep. So. yep. Mm -hmm. Well I can't uh, okay. I can't imagine a more beautiful place to wake up in the morning in this place. Well, I, I appreciate you saying that, Brian. Mm -hmm. I, uh, uh, there's a lot of work that goes along with it, too. Yeah, you know, but it's not its not always, uh, you know, all fun and games here. Yeah, but I bet the reward is tenfold. Yeah, it certainly can be. It's a great, like I said, it's a great place to live. It's a great place well, to live. And no the family track. heritage is there. Um, that it keeps us kind of, you know, kind of, uh, what I say? Kind of attached to the place. Yeah, well, we've fixed up the house quite a bit over the years. And yeah, I mean, uh, um, so it's, it's, I, it's hard for me. To, I mean, I recognize the original yeah. structure of well, the house. Yeah. You can see, you can see the 1900 section is yeah. the gable yeah. right there. Mm -hmm. See, mm -hmm. it was just an old gable wing house. Yeah, yeah. And then the the 1964 section is to the north. Yep. And yep. so that was added on then. And yep. then of course. When Glenn and I were here and married, we added on the garage, and then there's a family, yeah. a family room to the to the north and east. Well, my memories are northwest. I'm sorry. Walking mm -hmm. up that stair yeah. staircase to that door under those big trees that used to be here. Yeah, there used to two be or three big, big old trees. Old, old silver maple trees. They shaded this whole yard, whole yeah. whole yeah. house. Yeah, and there used to be a, a house yard fence that went around. Yeah, that was uh, just just. That your, was put mom, in, your mom's pride and joy fence? Well, uh, it, it was actually put in by my granddad, Carl, yeah. uh, in the, uh, and he and he and it was kept here by dad and mom over all those years because they had chickens at the time. They didn't want chickens to get in the house yard, so they, yeah. they kept it fenced off. And yeah. So that's the deal. Well, it's a great place. I don't know when the windmill was put up. Uh, it would have been the perhaps the late 1800s, early 1900s when that windmill was put there. Well, and that, the and top that, of that well, that she has been there for a while too. I remember that she had yeah. when I was out here yeah. back in the day. Yeah, in the 70s. Yeah, yeah, it was built in the 70s. Dad yeah. put it up as a replacement for the an old granary that was there. Yeah. So, um, well, yeah, and so there's been a lot of changes. Yep. But we try to keep a little bit of old and a little bit of new. This machine shed here I built just a year ago just to, to serve as more storage mm -hmm. for machinery and and kind of a shop area. To, the old Morton building? It's, it's, yeah, it's, yeah, it's it's uh, uh, part of it's insulated and part of it's uh, open. Right. Yep. And so that's been nice. This old this shed here is over 50 years old, so it's starting to deteriorate some. So yeah. we have to do some work on it, too. I'm sure. Well, this has been great. Yeah. I appreciate you yeah. telling me all about this place. Mm -hmm.